All right, so this video is going to discuss normality and how we determine normality. So this is an example in your textbook that we'll just use. Um, th that basically, there are three different methods that we can use to, um, to, dis to determine normality. Give me just one sec. All right, so, and, and, and those three different methods are, are histogram, a thing called a Pearson's index of skewness, or outliers, and um, so you know the deal is, is this: is that a normally shaped or bell-shaped distribution is only one of many shapes that a distribution can assume. So we got left skewed, we got right skewed, we got uh, normal, we've got bimodal, and, and so forth and so on. So, but normal is the one that we really care about. It's important since many statistical methods require distribution of values. So, and, and what we need is we need that normal or proximally normal shape. So there are several ways to check. There's a histogram, like I said, the Pearson index, or outliers. We looked at outliers in previous section, and you could use any of these. But for the ease of what we're doing, for, for this being a foundation class of just, you know, giving you the basic understanding of concepts, we're just going to use a histogram. So what I w would like for you to do, this is the particular problem, this is out of the back of the, the book, that I, or back of the section that I've shown you before, is what I'd like you to do is I'd like you just to go ahead and just use um, easycalculation.com. So inside the suggested homework, I've got a link to easycalculation.com, or if you're watching this video off of YouTube for some other class, um, you know, if you're looking for normality, make a histogram. So you can use your graphing calculator, you could use any, I mean, you can just Google hist creating a histogram and enter your set of data and then go from there, all right? So I'm going to demonstrate how to do this when we look at um, easy calculation. And that's what I'll recommend that you use unless you have your calculator, you can use your calculator to do it also, just like we did in previous chapters. So um, the person that did this problem, they decided that they would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes. What I want you to recall is that when you're making a histogram, you can have anywhere between five and 20 classes, depending on the amount of data that you have, depending on the sample size or the size of the population. Well, if you count your numbers right here, our sample size is 18. That's not very big. So what I'm going to suggest is, is since our sample size is so small, when you're using easy calculation, use a small number of classes. So, so, so choose five classes or choose six or choose seven like they did. Okay, it doesn't matter. But if you spread it out too much, because we have such a small set of data, your data is going to look very spread out. It's going to be, and it's, you're, not, you're going to think, oh, well, this isn't normal. Well, considering the small amount of data, this is a normal distribution. I mean, if you look at this, this would be considered normal. It has an approximate bell shape. There, there's not any significantly skewed. It's not skewed to the left. It's not skewed to the right. Overall, it follows that bell curve. Now, I agree. It is a little bit less right here, but nothing to get panicked about. It is approximate. It's good enough So, for what we're doing. And, and, you know, if you want to be more precise, you could use the Pearson's index. The Pearson's index is, is more accurate. Or you can go and calculate outliers, and you can test a number you might think is an outlier. And if it is an outlier, then the data is skewed. But a histogram gives you a nice picture. It's a little bit easier. It's easier to understand. It's the basic concept. All right, so what I wanted to show you was is what's it look like. So how do we put it in and so forth? So let's jump to our... Um, easycalculation.com and like I said I'll provide you this link so you know we're not making anything you're going to turn in so you come here it asks you for a graph title just put in a title it doesn't matter um, you know if you're doing this for something else where you need it to be all pretty then that would matter x-axis label just put something there it's going to require you to put it in put in your data values separated by a comma so put the number comma number comma number comma so forth and so on go slowly and make sure you got your numbers or count them up and then what I want to show you to start off is, is, here's what it looks like with seven. It looks slightly different than the picture they had because of, they set their classes up differently. Their classes are spread out a little bit differently than ours were in that picture. But if you look at this, once again, 
you look at this curve, you see that this guy has its basic normal distribution shape. It does basically, it has that basic shape. All right, so let's just make it five groups. So I'm just for conversation purposes, let's make it five groups. So we make it five, looks even more normal. If I put my little bar over top of this guy, I see, yeah, comes up, comes down, looks pretty normal. Everybody's happy. Well, let's just say, for example, we had 18 numbers. One of them was repeated, so let's say eight, 17 numbers. So all of a sudden, you're looking at this graph now, and you're saying to yourself, wait a second, I've got a gap. Oops, I don't know why that's doing that. I've got a gap right there. I've got a gap right there. Why is this happening? You know, and so, but that's the reason is because you have literally given each number its own category. So obviously you're going to have gaps that you don't have a number from 15 to 25. You don't have a number from uh, 125 to 145. So just kind of keep that in mind, you know, use, because of the size, the point of what I'm saying here is because of the size of our data set, let's keep, let's keep that, that class size down to the minimum, somewhere around five, six, seven. All right. And so that when we take a look at your distribution, that's how you find normality, find normality through a histogram. That's the best way. You can also find normality through a Pearson's index which you can look that up, it's in your textbook, you can Google it, or you can find it through an outlier. Both the Pearson's Index and the outlier have formulas, and you just plug things into your formula, and, and it tells you whether or not you're inside the range or outside the range of what's appropriate for being considered an outlier or to being too skewed, all right?